<sighs> Hi YouTube. It's been a while. And to be honest with you, I've been super busy over the last couple of weeks, but it's given me a chance to really think about the kind of video that I want to do for when I come back. What can I do that's gonna give you guys the most value and the most information as possible? And I think I've got it. I know a huge chunk of my audience are either new creators or live streamers are looking to build a YouTube channel, but they just have no idea what to do. They have no idea what kind of videos they want to make or what their niche could be or what kind of value they can provide on YouTube amongst the sea of other content creators out there. And along with that, they're not even sure if it's possible to grow a channel in 2021, which by the way, spoiler alert, it absolutely is possible. And I'll go over that throughout this video. So in this video, I decided to go over a couple of different topics of videos and for kinds of things that you guys can do as a new creator to really take advantage of YouTube and grow this year but not only that I'm gonna apply that knowledge to your YouTube channels as well you guys responded to my tweet and on the community post on YouTube of some ideas that you guys want to do for your channels I asked you guys to send in two to five of your favorite YouTube creators along with something you're passionate about and something you're talented or skilled at and using those different things and the knowledge that I've shared in this video we're gonna combine everything together and come with some cool ideas that I think you guys could do for your YouTube channels and and just for the record, I'm not going to be able to get through every single person that sent in a response because there was a lot of you, but I'm going to give you a blueprint so you can figure out the kind of content that you want to make based on the things that I share in this video. So with that said and done, let's just dive in. Over the time that YouTube has been around, there's been several different kinds of content trends. Things that worked 10 years ago on the platform may not work as well nowadays. They still might, and there's exceptions to that rule, but I'll get to that later on. And as a new YouTuber, it's very important to take into consideration some things that YouTube has nowadays and taken priority of nowadays that will affect you going forward. The first thing you need to understand is that YouTube is essentially a massive search engine. So things like Google and Bing, it's actually the second largest search engine to Google, and it is also owned by Google. So there's that. People come to YouTube all the time in search of answers to questions they have or to find particular solutions to issues they are currently facing. Ask yourself, how many times do you yourself go to YouTube to search for something? How many times do you have questions you want answering and a YouTube video is more than likely the best place for that? I guarantee there's a couple of you. Actually, but there's a few of you that found this channel or my videos through the search engine on YouTube. And if you were one of those people, let me know in the comments down below. And with knowing that search is one of the most important things on YouTube, it leads me to my first video topic that you guys can start doing as a new content creator. Educational. Educational content is probably the biggest video topic that I recommend to new content creators because it allows you to talk about things you know a lot about already. Say for example that you know how to repair or renovate cars. What you can do is build a channel on that knowledge base and share that information out so people can do that kind of stuff at home. And this kind of content is really, really effective in many other ways. For example, you can get weeks worth of content out for your channel just by batch filming a bunch of videos and then scheduling the upload dates so you have weeks of content well in advance. And that's probably the biggest advantage to this particular topic. But let's move on to another topic which has similar advantages, and that is review content. Review content is pretty much as simple as it sounds. It's having a product that you believe in or have purchased, and you just make a video on it. How many of you guys have searched up a particular phone review or camera review or a particular gadget review before you've gone out and bought it? Everybody wants to see how a product works, the pros and the cons cons about it before making an educated purchase on that particular item and videos are a great 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 way of demonstrating the capabilities of that product sound like uh, what's his name Elmer Fudd why we're hunting rabbits and it's another powerful way to batch produce content because you can get through two or three products in a single day and schedule those videos for upload weeks at a time and it doesn't even have to be a new product you can even review older products that you've had for some time that you want to give extra info on and give your own opinion on you can even do the same thing for tv shows and movies and comic books and anime you know because everybody watches anime and similar to creators like mkbhd and unbox therapy you can start branching out once your audience starts growing into more creative gadgets and things that weren't normally going to be considered for reviews you can do those as well so you have a lot of potential for growth the further you are down the line and as a secret pro tip if you are going to do product reviews make sure you leave a link 
to the product in your description and make sure that is an Amazon associate or an affiliate link, you know? If you're going to review the product and somebody buys it from you, you might as well, you know, get supported along the way. It doesn't cost them anything extra and you are one step closer to now being able to make this your full-time career. So, win-win. Uh, Let's move on. Now, the last two topics of content that I want to discuss, I wouldn't recommend to new content creators, but I will give you some ways you can take advantage of them if it is something you want to do. They are gaming videos and vlog content. Starting off with gaming videos, I'm mostly talking about things like Let's Plays, where people like Markiplier and Jacksepticeye play through a game and upload that chronologically so you guys can enjoy the game without purchasing it. Those creators started that genre way back when their channels were just starting out and they grew their audience around it. And the only reason why they still do is because that is the foundation of their channel, it is the main reason why their audiences are so large. You can have their videos thrown into the algorithm because their audiences watch and consume that kind of content on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're a new content creator and you're looking to make videos around video games, then I recommend looking at the education category and start thinking about how you can apply education to the games that you play. And the best way of doing that is if you are good at a video game, you should make videos teaching people how to be better at it. For example, I have no idea how to play Valheim. So what would I do as somebody who doesn't know how to play it and wants to learn more about it? I would go to YouTube and I would type in how to play Valheim, search up what I want to watch and find a video that explains how Valheim works. If you are good at a game and you want to make content around that game, you should then make content to help improve a person's ability to play that game. And this is personally where I see YouTube Shorts being a huge factor in this kind of content. You could, for example, have a YouTube Shorts channel that goes into detail on particular items from a video game and then have multiple shorts based on different items from that game. In fact, Blockfax did this exact same thing with Minecraft, where he did YouTube shorts covering every single block in Minecraft and giving facts about that particular block. And his channel has grown to over 800,000 subscribers in just over three months. And I'm going to be going over shorts in much more detail in a future video, so if you guys want to see that, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, be ready for that. Gaming and education are two great ways to start building up a channel. Let's move on to our last video topic, and that's vlogging. Vlogging has been heavily popularized by YouTubers like Casey Neistat and Peter McKinnon and these other YouTubers that go around the world and document their experiences and what they do in their day-to-day -day life. However, for a new channel starting out, vlogging isn't probably the smartest thing I recommend doing because you don't have a brand established yet. You don't have an audience that wants to watch and engage with your day-to-day -day life experiences. And also with how the YouTube algorithm works and how each vlog is different, it's very hard to have a title, a thumbnail, and a video topic that will get people's attention when they go and look for that kind of content. However, I do see a place for vlogging when you have an established audience. If your channel is predominantly 80 to 90% help or educational content, then that 10 to 20% gives you that creative to flexibility to try new things. That 10 to 20% could always be a vlog that you upload, maybe like once a month that your audience would love to see because you've started to build a relationship with them. So with that said and done, let's go over what we've learned and apply it to the things you guys sent in to me online and see if we can come up with something really, really cool for a new YouTube channel. Professor Small tweeted in saying these very creators are Ludwig, David Nash, Mr. Beast, Harris Heller, and Stream Scheme, along with being interested in video games, movies, comics, and Lego, as well as being a teacher and going to be teaching data and logic. I really do think your channel could be very, very, very short focused with heavy influence on that data and logic and information and kind of teaching aspect with all the different things you're interested in. Do something very similar to what Blockfax is doing and do shorts on things like how strong is Hulk compared to Superman? Or do things like how much weight can a single Lego brick hold and do all these facts and figures and data? Then you can maybe go into more in-depth videos where you break down logistics and science and data and give it that creative spin like you do with those shorts. But I really do think that short form content is where you could really have a massive impact and do some really, really fun and creative stuff. Party Scientist says Philip DeFranco, Binging with Babish, Dude Perfect, Mark Rober, and Slow Mo Guys. He's passionate about bartending and he feels like teaching you something that comes natural to him. Yours 
It got me very excited because I came with a fantastic idea. Wouldn't it be awesome if you mixed, quite literally, that bartending passion that you have with the binging with Babish style videos and created something like YouTuber cocktails? What would Markiplier taste like as a cocktail? You know, what kind of things could you do that would be really, really creative in that aspect? Maybe you could film it all in slow motion, include the slow-mo guy influence into your content. Maybe that slow motion footage could be a really cool YouTube show that you show off and you have really, really cool quick cuts in your video and how you make the Markiplier cocktail or the Jack Jacksepticeye cocktail. And then with your longer length videos, you go more in depth. You talk about the process for making it, how long you should mix it for, the kind of ingredients you decided to pick for it. Go full more binging with a Babish style content for it. I think that's an awesome idea. If you don't do it, probably somebody else will. Orion said, forging with wild food, cooking outdoors, and combining the above skills of making meals out of wild foods. This one is super cool, and I think you can do some really creative things with this one as well. There's a gentleman on TikTok that I forget the name of right at this moment, but he goes out and he makes tools out of foraged and found items out in the wild. And I bet you could do something really, really cool and take that to another level and include some of your favorite influencers in that kind of content. You can include some Peter McKinnon style cinematography and imagery with some Binging with Babish creative recipes like what would it be like to do some Game of Thrones recipes out in the wild and foraging for these kinds of items that you would need to make this recipe. Something like that would be awesome for full length videos and you could even take it one step further and do really, really short, quick cooking tips for those people outdoors and turn those into YouTube shorts. Phantom King loves video games in general, but depending on the game, he loves the lore and the characters. You can do silly impressions like Rick and Morty and Carl Weezer. How about this? Why don't you do some kind of channel like My Name Is Bife where he takes the lore of Destiny and expands it out and does these really full, long, in-depth videos discussing the lore about a particular video game, but you take it one step further and you spin your own narrative to it. Do different impressions of the characters, create an entire story around the content and the lore of this particular video game that you enjoy. Give some character and some meaning to it and with the right title and thumbnail, I think that could be a very, very popular genre that is very, very much untapped when it comes to YouTube videos. Faria said Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, Grace Who Plays, B-dubs and Good Times With Scar, music and comedy and music. <laughs> One thing that I thought of that could work really well for you is what if you rescored famous video games and tried to put your own creative spin on what different things would sound like if you had control over what the game's music track was like. How would The Last of Us sound to you if you made the soundtrack for that game? How would any video game soundtrack work if you had to do it? Take that idea and come with some really cool and creative ways to make that work. And in all honesty, that's another great way to take advantage of shorts because music and shorts go hand in hand really, really well. Get creative with those two sides of your personality and see what happens. Your love and passion for video games and your love of passion for music and comedy. And that goes for anyone, by the way. If you want to start a YouTube channel, the best blueprint and the best kind of rule of thumb is take something you're passionate about and take something you're good at and combine them together to come up with some really cool and creative and unique ideas. And don't worry if somebody else is doing them and maybe doing them for longer than you have. That shouldn't stop you from trying to put out your own content. I always like to bring up my burger analogy whenever I do this kind of thing. You can think of any burger place like McDonald's, Burger King, Five Guys, In-N-Out, Whataburger, you name it. Any place that does a burger does it, but does it differently. They don't own the idea of what a burger is, but each one of them does it differently and does something unique with that concept. Find what makes you unique and then use your skills to create some amazing content out of it. And after all this, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Hope you guys find it useful when it comes to starting up your own channel. And if you did find it useful, then make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. And if you guys want to maybe jump into a conversation with me and discuss your own ideas and brainstorm a little bit, then feel free to follow me on Twitch. The link to my channel is down below on every single Tuesday and Thursday and Sunday. And with all that said and done, I hope you guys keep safe, keep well, and until next time, take care.